In this video, I'm going to go over what I've been working on Battle Royale Tycoon, along with an overview of how each element works. Guest money, restaurant, double damage, steam achievements, and trading cards. Let's begin! So I continue to work on Battle Royale Tycoon. The plan is to get it fully completed and out of early access by the end of this month. You can pick up the current version on Steam, and if you do, please make sure to write a review since reviews help the game stand out. Here I will go over what I've been working on and a brief overview of how each element works. If you'd like a more detailed video on anything I show here, please post it in the comments. So in total, I've been working on finishing the maintenance system, making transporters carry multiple weapons, guest money, more overlays, restaurant, arena items, and started designing the Steam achievements and trading cards. On the maintenance system, I've managed to complete it, which was started on the previous devlog. Essentially, each building is composed of various lanes that the guests use to entertain themselves. Now, when they finish using a lane, the lane gets a small maintenance hit. If the maintenance state gets too low, then the lane is no longer usable until a maintenance worker goes to repair. So over here, you can see an icon that shows that this lane is broken and cannot be used right now. So we need to go up here, hire some maintenance workers, wait for one of them to come in, and there he is, and he's repairing just like that. And after a while, he repairs, everything goes back to normal, and the lane is usable again. Here is the simple class that handles the maintenance state. As you can see, it simply has a simple float for the maintenance state. We start off by default at 1, then we can repair it, which sets it back to 1. We ask if it needs a repair, which is if it's under 1, and if it's usable, which is under 0.05. So we can repair the object, ask if it needs repair, ask if it's usable, and actually spend the maintenance amount. So this is a very simple class that is essentially instantiated on every single object lane. And then down here we have a simple function to create the visual. So it simply subscribes to the on maintenance state changed event. And if it's not usable, it shows that sprite. And if it is usable, it destroys the sprite and removes the icon. Then when something is broken, the workers simply go to repair. Now, one of the most significant features I've added was the ability for a transporter to carry multiple weapons at once. This was something I've wanted to try out for a long time, since while playing the game it's very frustrating to constantly be waiting for weapons to be delivered. The solution was to simply hire more transporters, but it looks quite bad when the park requires 30 transporters just to function. So I finally decided to tackle this problem, and surprisingly it was actually much easier than I previously thought. I thought I would need some really complex extra actions with more data when creating each task, however in the reality it was much easier. When a transporter asks the task system for a task, I run a simple function to try to merge those tasks. So over here is where the transporter requests an order, and right before I give him an order I try to merge all of the nearby tasks. So over here there's a maximum distance, it does a cycle through all of the tasks, and then it simply tests the distance between each task position from the from and the to position, since essentially an item goes from a position to a position. So if two tasks are nearby on both the from and the to, then they are together and I simply merge those tasks. So this is the part that I thought would be very difficult, but actually is extremely simple. I simply created a new task type, and this task type simply contains both of the different tasks. Then all I needed was to modify the transport in order to be able to execute this new task type, so he essentially goes to the first item, grabs the item, then goes to the second item, grabs it, both items have been grabbed, then takes the first item to the target position, drops the item, goes to drop the second item, drops the second item, and requests a new order. So over here we can view the end result. Let's buy some weapons and see if they transport them correctly. So over here a bunch of weapons have been spawned, this one comes, and there you go, he grabs one and he grabs two and he's moving away. So as you can see this essentially doubles the speed at which the transporters transport weapons. There he goes, let's see where he's going, and he's going in there and simply drops both weapons. So there you go, just one transporter made one trip and moved two weapons. So this whole thing helps the park run much more smoothly with much fewer transporters. And that same code was also applied to the arena workers, so over here when they go to setup, let's see if one of them grabs two weapons, and there you go, that one grabbed two, and now he goes there, places one there, another one there, and so on. So everything is now much faster. Also related to that, the cleanup functions now also check for the closest nearby task. So as you can see, that one cleaned up that one, cleaned up that one, cleaned up that one, so that makes it much faster. 
So all in all, a lot of new invisible features that help the park run much more smoothly. Now one great addition was giving the guests money. So when they are spawned, they start off with a certain slightly randomized amount of money. And as they go through the park and interact with the various buildings, they spend the money from their wallet. And when they think about which building to go to, they first check if they can afford it. And if they can't afford anything, they'll leave the park with no money. So over here is the guest park roaming AI. It's a very simple script that essentially decides what the guest will do. So over here we have the basic asking if the guest is too tired, if so, leave the park. Then here we have asking if the guest still has money. If he has under four bucks, then we can leave the park. And now the way to counter that system is with the new ATM building. Here it is, very simple, place it in there and there it is. Now a guest goes in there, thinks about it for a while, there you go, he has five bucks and he interacts with the ATM and there you go, now he has 55 bucks. So that is taken care of in here. So essentially he checks if his wallet amount is under a certain ATM amount, in this case 70 bucks. So if he has under 70 bucks, he tries to look for a nearby ATM. If he finds one and he can join it, he goes there and grabs his money. Now in order to ensure that the guest does not stay in the park forever, there's a limit to how much money he can withdraw. The same is true of the coffee shop. Essentially, if they could go to the coffee shop and withdraw money without any limits, then the guests would never leave the park, since the energy would go down, get some coffee, money go down, get some ATM. So both of those are limited. And here it is, just a very simple function. So the guest has a simple integer to define how many ATM visits, and he can go there if it's under a certain maximum. The same thing over here for the coffee visits. So that's how each guest has a certain money amount. Now in this update, also a couple more overlays. Previously I just had overlays with icons, which look very nice. However, now I've added some overlays that display text. So in here this shows how many guests have visited a particular building, and in here the revenue from that building. Now I like the information that this overlay shows, but I need to figure out how to explain to the player what each number means. Essentially in here the top one is how much revenue this building generated on the previous month, and underneath is how much revenue generated this month. I like having those two pieces of information, but I need to figure out some way of explaining that to the player. Either way, right now you can easily see which buildings are bringing the most profit per every month. Then also an overlay here for the guest wallet amount, something very simple. If it's red, then he only has 8 bucks, and this one here in slight green, and he has 55 bucks. So just an easy way of seeing how many ATMs you need to add. So over here you can see quite a bit of red, so I would probably need to add a couple more ATMs. A new great building to solve guests hunger and thirst is the restaurant in here. The building is composed of three inner buildings. There's the stove where the food is made, the counter where the waiter passes an order to the cook, and the table where the guests sit. So a guest goes in, sits, asks the worker for his order, the worker goes, places the order in there, the cook grabs the order, starts cooking the food, after a while, the food is finished, it's placed back on the counter, and when the worker is available, there he goes, he grabs the food, and he gives it to the worker, to the guest, and he starts to eat. And as he does, he solves both his hunger and his thirst needs. So this building is more expensive than down here, the simple food and drink kiosks, but it allows for greater efficiency by quickly serving many guests and solving both needs. So it's a very nice extra building that adds a bit more complexity and makes the park a lot more interesting. Then down here on the arena added two new arena items, the double damage and the frag grenade. So when he goes, grabs the grenade, fires it and it causes an explosion and the double damage stays active for a while and doubles his amount of damage. So they do exactly what they're mean to, they're very simple and add some nice extra variety. So over here I can add quite a lot of them, and there you go, he has double damage, he fires, he fires a grenade, explodes, and it all looks quite nice. So just two more items to add more variety to each arena. Then he also started designing the achievements and trading cards. I'm planning to release the game at the end of this month, so it's about time to start adding some Steam features. I want to add achievements, trading cards, clouds, stats, leaderboards, and workshop support. If you've never dealt with any of this stuff, then it might sound very intimidating, but in reality it's actually rather simple. There's the awesome open source Steamworks.net, which is written in C-sharp and very easy to use. So for most things, it's really simple. 
the more complex thing is implementing the workshop. But for that I have all the code that I've used in my other games, so reworking that code to fit this game is probably not going to be very difficult. So these have been the elements that I've been working on Battle Royale Tycoon. Maintenance system, transporters carrying multiple weapons, guest money, more overlays, restaurant, arena grenade and double damage, and start designing these team achievements and trading cards. The game is coming along nicely and I'm really looking forward to having a finished game. It is out now on Steam Early Access, so you can pick it up right now to play in the current state. In doing so, you'll be supporting this channel. The features shown in this video and the previous download were added on today's update with version 0.14. If you do get the game, please make sure to write a review since those are very important for getting the game more visibility on Steam, which helps out quite a lot. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials and devlogs. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time!